Once again, good morning, everybody, and welcome to episode 183 of the On Air Advocate. Where at the On Air Advocate, we look to provide education, support, and empowerment for all of those with different abilities, mental and medical illnesses, and their caregivers. For those of you who may not know me, my name is Tammy Flynn, and I am the host and producer of the On Air Advocate. And I am super excited if you are here joining us this morning, or whether you are catching this on the replay. Now, as always, if you think that this content could be relevant or helpful for anyone in your network or your circle, please hit the share button and share the love with others. Well, as you guys may have seen on our page, and we did a little snapshot of it yesterday, is today is our official kickoff of Autism Acceptance and Awareness Month. And with that, I am so excited to have here with me Jackie Folk. She is an author, a mother, and an autism community leader. So thank you so much, Jackie, for being with us here this morning. Yeah, thank you, Tammy, for having me, especially for your kickoff. I'm super excited. Yes, and you're coming to us via Kansas, right? Yeah, I'm in a little town um, called Eudora, Kansas. And how, how is it there? How is the weather there? Are, do you guys got any sunshine, warmth yet, or not really? Yeah, we were like close to 90 yesterday, and then we had a freeze warning last night. It's, it's Kansas weather, yeah. Okay, so it's a little bit like... <laughs> up and down, up yeah. and down. How I feel like things are for a lot of people right now. Um, so, Jackie, you know, I want to learn so many things. I mean, you've done things from being an author to starting support groups, to all of that, and all the knowledge that you have to lend our audience today. But first, you know, just tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, um, so I, I am married to my high school sweetheart, Mike. Um, we've been married 26 years. And we have three sons. My oldest attends college in Colorado. Um, my youngest is a junior in high school. I guess technically finished with his junior year with school ending. And my middle son, Ethan, is my child who um, is diagnosed with autism. And he was diagnosed um, back in 2003. And as you know, we spoke about this um, those early diagnosis um, times were so confusing because back then there were no online platforms. You couldn't just Google um, what you wanted to do. For me, um, I didn't even know what autism was um, outside of a few, like a handful of movies I had seen. Mm -hmm. So um, that early process for us when he was first diagnosed was just filled with um i remember distinctly and i tell everybody i cried all the way home and it was a process of many many doctors and developmental pediatricians ruling things out and then there was relief to get an answer and then there was fear and i cried all the way home and i just decided that day when i got home that that was it i i had my pity party um i had my mourning period and i knew just looking at his little face in the back seat that that it was time to get started immediately and my only resource was the library um there were certainly no parents in my small town who had kids with autism that i knew of or could speak to or ask bounce ideas off of so i went to the library and I got Thinking in Pictures by Temple Grandin. And I will tell you to this day, any Temple Grandin has kind of been my guide. Um, I learned very on through her readings that like I just knew that I was going to work with treating Ethan the same as Brett and Garrett and expecting the same things out of him, even though they had to be done completely differently and I wasn't gonna get the same results. I, I just knew that that early on that that treatment was going to be the same and the expectations were going to be the same. I just had accepted I wouldn't be let down when those expectations weren't met. Um, and I just started reading, teaching myself um, different methods. ABA was so controversial. I don't know if you um, tried it or had experience, but it was so controversial back then. And certainly nothing was covered by insurance so you're just working around the clock you're paying like you have college tuition the day your kid's born with no time to prepare right and uh i went to my local newspapers because that was how you reached out back then 
and I just did stories probably on a six month basis and saying, here, here I am. Is there anybody like me out there? And that's when one mom reached out to me. And about six months later, another mom reached out to me and uh, her name's Stacy. And she is the one who currently runs the nonprofit with me. We just built that um, bond early on and stayed together. Right now, um, quick backup question. How old was your son when that, in that year of 2003? Wh how old was he at that time? So he was two and a half, um, which is an early diagnosis, which we're thankful for. Mm -hmm. And we always knew, you don't want to use the word wrong, but we always knew something was off. Something was different. Right. Um, but he was so sick that we focused on the health before the development. And once he finally got healthy, we just dove right into the development. Right. And when you're talking about those new, like at, at the time, like ABA, and I've done interviews with people who do that within the home, um, mm -hmm. therapists and whatnot. And, you know, there's like the RPM and, you know, all of that, all the different educational tools that now have kind of come forward. And I mm -hmm. still, um, and I know this is getting a tiny bit off course, but I want to bring it up before I forget because yeah. I have, I have like COVID-19 brain, like <laughs> all this quarantine brain yeah. um, is that, and I'm not really sure why, and I've, I've done kind of some segments on this before, but within that um, autism and spectrum, you know, community, there are lots of things that are controversial, you know, and it's interesting to me and I've asked some leaders, you know, and parents that are kind of in that space and support groups, like, have you ever asked your group, uh, you know, about this? Because when I look at different topics, you know, like if you have a different condition, a different diagnosis, and I interview those groups of people, there's never, it's kind of like, you know, hey, we have spina bifida, we wanna learn from each other. You know, we have CP, we wanna try all these modalities and see what could be beneficial for us. And as parents, we wanna share them together and just try them because you never know what's gonna work or not, right? I mean, it's all trial and error. I mean, we don't right. know our own individual. Do you have a sense as to where that frustration sometimes or that, um, you know, kind of feeling of that, you know, it's controversial comes from within the community? I, you know, I, it's interesting that you ask this because I do talk about this even just with my husband quite a bit. I, I don't know because I don't know if it comes from a place of just wanting to have control of something, wanting something to work or wanting to be right about something. So you might say, you know, I, I tried rapid prompting method and it worked, so it's going to work for everybody. But there seems to be that lack of acceptance in the fact that, you're, that not everything's going to work and that's okay, but right. it can be perfectly fine and the right method for child A and absolutely not right for child B. There kind of seems to be that disconnect. Um, and, that, and I think that's where social media has been very helpful because you can join a group or join a platform and say, oh, this doesn't align with me and go to another one. The problem prompts in then when, when those platforms start fighting and arguing and saying you're right or wrong, right. because you can be right and wrong at the same time, because it's not about the method. It's about how the method applies to the child. That's, that's so correct. And I know you stating, I don't know what the other medical conditions that your son has, but as you know, I mean, my son has 28 different medical conditions. He has 28 diagnoses. Mm -hmm. And I have to tell you that out of those diagnoses, there's 500 different things we've tried and different specialists. And, and you know, you, you try your best, you go, you see, and sometimes you're like, wonk, wonk, that didn't yeah. work. You know? Yeah, um, yeah. we did that with play, for, for us, play therapy was a total failure. Mm -hmm. uh, it did not work for us. But I know so many families who have, had huge success with play therapy and that's great. I never talk bad about play therapy. I just say, oh, it didn't work for us, but I've heard this success story, success right. story. And I think maybe that's what's missing is, is right. that piece of communication. Yeah. And that's just something as someone who, 
who is in in the the medical um, diagnosis where you know that I, I'm there and I'm doing it, it's just for different conditions. You know, mm -hmm. I would love to see when I say Autism Acceptance Month, you know, like saying all these parents, it's uniting and being like, you know what, we're all trying stuff, we're all doing our best. We're yeah. all doing our best to see what works and the more, you know, support and knowledge we can get out of that, you know, the better. Um, and so what led you into, you know, I know shortly after that diagnosis, about two and a half years or so, three years after, it seems as if you launched some type of parent support group. And I think that's your nonprofit now. Can you, can you share that with us? Yeah, so when, when I first started with that, um, we called it E-Man, um, just because we've always called Ethan E. And that was in the early, early stages where I was just like, please, somebody find me and tell me that you share a life like mine. Um, and then that's where Rebecca and Stacy had reached out to me through the newspapers. And we just kind of talked for a few years, and then we had heard there was another local lady who was starting her own so clearly she didn't know about us and we thought well we need to meet mm -hmm. um and what happened was we just merged and we merged ideas and changed the name and we formed what is now eudora aces which stands for autism community education and support and in the early years we offered monthly support meetings but what we found was people didn't have time to come to face-to-face -face monthly support meetings. Mm -hmm. So we went to social media platforms and we decided that our main um, goal was going to be to have autism walks here in our small town every um, first Saturday of April for Autism Awareness Month and raise money to buy technology um, needs, any kind of OT, physical therapy needs, um, that were on wish lists for our special education classes and put it into our schools that were so underfunded. Um, so that's what we've done. This was supposed to be our 10th year, but our walk got canceled. <laughs> our walk got canceled last week. So you guys, uh, we did you a virtual guys, walk. Wait, you're, oh, you're doing a virtual walk? Or you did? We did. We did. We just asked people to log in that day and upload photos of their families taking walks and tag us. So, oh my goodness. I need to go in that group and say, so it's in the group. Uh, yeah, well, we have a page. Eudora Aces has a Facebook page. Okay, go see that. Okay, your 10 year anniversary. That must have been like just, you know, what I'm saying so profound and emotional to just see that how far this has evolved. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, Stacy and I both have adult kids, and our passion and vision is shifting a little bit in life. And so actually, this was not only supposed to be our 10th, but our 10th and last, because we're merging with the school foundation and giving them all of our money and letting them start up a, um, not start up, but have a separate grant process for special ed classes with our money. So it was, it was such a bummer to have to cancel it. We were devastated. Yes. You know, but, um, you know, hopefully there are some people that engage in those other, you know, activities and the works that you guys have done will live on within like a legacy forever, you know, with it merging with the schools and, and all of that. So, yeah, I hope so, so. so with that, you know, I know you guys, so are you guys still providing not the walk, but still the support group or the support page, or is like that whole kind of entity moving on to the school base? Yeah, so we are actually going to um, dissolve ACEs and moving it into the school base. Um, I just have a different vision now where I'm trying to go with my online platforms and more advocacy at the um, adult level, job skill level, right. and things like that. And Stacy has her child with autism um, is away at college also. So we feel it's going in, in great hands or we would never walk away from it. But you know, it's been 10 years as ACEs, but for me personally, it's been like 17 years. So I'm just ready to move on to a different direction. Yes. And how old is your son now? He's 19. He'll be 20 this summer. Okay. And you know, what I always say is that it's kind of like that next chapter and you yes. actually have to kind of relive that mourning process a little bit over again as you move from that 
you know, childhood, youth, age into that adulthood. Um, you know, if you have medical things, it's that transition from pediatrician to adult physician, um, yeah. medical world. And, you know, for school, we go from all of these in entitlement services that we don't really realize when we're in school, their entitlement um, mm -hmm. to all of these eligibility services and yes. all the things that you knew before, well, they really don't apply. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know? We were talking about that earlier. We, I told Michael, I said, you know, for all of these years, a bus has picked Ethan up every morning. We have had providers at the school. And of course there's struggles with that because there's IEPs and setting the plan. And he's had transportation afterwards. And in May, that is, I mean, that's bye-bye. We are getting, going to have to get, you know, hired transportation, just all these different things, you know, working job skills. And you also kind of lose that, um, at least for us, Mike and I were talking about how we kind of lose that hope and idea you've always had of being empty nesters. I don't think that's going to happen for us for many, many years, if at all. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, you do start all over again. It's just a different step of a different process of accepting some of the losses that you accepted, you know, prior to preschool. Right. And for those that, you know, need the guardianship end of it, um, mm -hmm. to make those decisions for them, which is sometimes within that spectrum that, you know, autistic community, depending where you fall on, you know, the spectrum and severity. I mean, I think that plays a big role in it, you know, um, as well. But yeah, I as yeah. people who watch the show or follow me personally, that has been our biggest step. My son will be 23 this year. And mm -hmm. that transition since 21 when we left school has been like, what yeah. in the world? Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, and we did seek guardianship. So we've gone through that process, um, which was, it was easier than I thought it would be. Um, but there is a hardship that comes with that, right? When you have to fill out all these legal documents that list only the things your kid can't do when you've spent so much time focusing on what they can do. Right. Um, but we did go through that. That's now behind us. Um, but we allowed ourselves to feel all those emotions while we were going through the process. And I think that that helped. Yeah. You know, I, re, um, I remember and I reflect back to the day, you know, I obviously did all the paperwork, had it all. He didn't have to appear in court with me, but just yeah. as the, you know, the, the court commissioner, you know what I'm saying, was reading the stuff back to me. I just had that moment from like when he was born, you know what I'm saying, of all those mm -hmm. emotions and all those feelings. I think it does come full circle. So I do think that there is that big process and you as, um, you know, an autism community leader in the things that you do, I, I think that changing platforms as to also serving, you know, our young adults, you know, it is a different, um, it, it's a, it's a different landscape as you're, yeah. you know. And um, that, that's kind of what helped me um, really process the, um, you know, dissolving ACEs. It's been such a huge part of my life, but I'm not going anywhere. I'm just going in a different direction. And my focus was on the school's because that's where it needed to be. And now it needs to be um, on adult services. So yeah. I, feel, I feel good about my next step. Yes. I mean, I think it's great for um, moms that have been in the journey, you're over two decades in, to be those ones because we need to be the, the, the next generation, you know what I'm saying, to educate the parents coming up so they don't miss out on things that right now we're like, okay, that was frustrating. That yeah, great. Sure. You know, um, that process. Mm -hmm. So, out of all of this, developing the support group, having that, where did becoming an author come in? I mean, you have an incredibly cute, adorable. I love your book. Thank you. <laughs> um, can you tell me where did that kind of blossom from? I mean, it came from just the simple fact that we didn't have those things when Ethan was little. And I remember the first time somebody looked at me and said, well, you just need to write a social story. And it was just that, well, you just need to write a social story. And I was like, that's awesome. And I'll do it. But what's a social story? You know, <laughs> you, what is it? Tell me what it is. And so once somebody explained to me, you know, what social stories are and what they do, I just started making um, my own social stories on notebook paper. And then I would take photographs of Ethan with my camera and print them off and stick them on the notebook pages. And I would make him books for washing his hands and going potty and, you know, riding the school bus. And we had those readily available. 
And um, as he got older, I had just kept him in an envelope. And my mom said, you know, you should really um, try to publish these. And I was like, you're crazy. <laughs> I mean, who's going to want to see these? Um, but then when she passed away, I, I said, well, I'm going to try. And um, I knew that there was an importance to having or trying to provide a resource so that when somebody said to another mom or dad or care provider of any kind, you really need a social story for that, that maybe they could Google it now and find it and it's just done for them. So that's what put the drive behind it was just wanting to, of course you want anything you do to do well, but my main goal is I want to help people. So I want these social stories to be readily available. So the first one we started was hygiene and how strange is that now with the COVID what? is that the first book is about hygiene. So that's the one that's out there. Wonderful. And where can people access that book? So you can get it at directly at mascotbooks.com and that'll come directly from the factory. But we're also on Amazon. Um, we just recently can be found at target.com and walmart.com. We're available in Kindle and Nook. So we're available in electronic forms. Um, there's a lot of different ways you can get it now. Okay, well, we're going to need to make sure that um, when when we're done with the show today that you drop all those links and kind of provide sure. places people can find the book. Because especially like you're saying right now with the situation we're in, how great would that be to have at home and that understanding, you know? I mean, I think that this... Yeah. This push for hygiene, washing hands, though it should have always been there, I think the campaign for it is going to be so prevalent for years to come. You know, yeah. after this, I don't think that that's um, going to subside after things calm down a little bit. Yeah. Um, which well, when Ethan went through early years of being nonverbal, um, he got language at about five. I mean, he got, he acquired it and it went away and then he was in intense speech therapy. So one of the other things I did in this book was I made sure the longest process for us was illustrations because I would go back and I would say that eyebrow frow is just not exactly perfect. And we would spend so much time so that the facial expressions are there. And there's also sequencing. So if you have a child that's nonverbal, you should be able to still go through the story and go through sequencing and then have a conversation like, you know, the words said the water was hot, but how does Ethan feel? And you can point to his face and, and the facial expressions are there. So that was really important to me. And they all start and end with the same words um, because my son was echoalic. So I wanted them all to start and end with the same phrase. That way, if nothing else, they could um, learn to maybe repeat along with you, even if they couldn't read along with you. So I just, I hope it's, I've had good feedback. I hope it's doing what it was intended to do. Right. Thank you for breaking that down though, in, in the story, how you put that together. Um, and yeah. as I asked you before, um, this is a side note now that I've <laughs> going to divert for a second for other moms that are out there. Cause you know, I am positive that there are other moms within, um, our community of different abilities that are like, I want to share that about this child's, you know, my child's condition, or I think that would really be useful to a parent. Um, when, when we're talking about publishing books and things like that, and especially if they're for kids, you know, you do need some illustration and stuff in there. Would you say going through a publishing company was a, a positive experience for you versus what you've seen people that try to self-publish? Yeah, it was for me. I, I definitely chose the right company. I had full 100% say and control over everything. Mm -hmm. um, and if I asked my illustrator to make 100 changes, he did. But I didn't have to go find an illustrator. You know, um, they came to me and it was, it was a really fun process because they came to me. I had 75 um, portfolios and then I narrowed it down to like 10 styles. And then out of those styles of drawings, I sent those um, illustrators photos of my son mm -hmm. and I said, draw him and send it back to me. And then I got to choose the one that I liked. But if, if the, my editor wouldn't have been there to do that, I would have had no idea how to go with that process. Okay. And what about getting into other stores and stuff? I know this is going like to entrepreneurial mom, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> um, yeah. but you know, getting, I know that like getting it into Barnes and Noble and getting it into Target and Walmart, was that the doing of going through a company like mascot books? 
So at first, yes, you, you, you're the marketing team automatically puts you in uh, books a million Barnes and Noble and Amazon for the, for the company that I chose. Okay. And then it's just kind of been manufacturers um, seeing how sales are doing and choosing to add it to their shelves if they want. And at word of mouth, me, I've just been big mouthing my book any, to anybody who will listen. Okay. Perfect. Um, because I know that it, that that is something I've seen lots of moms, obviously within this platform, that have written books or put things out or are thinking about doing it. And I know that it's always a question. So thank you for that. And um, yeah. we will drop those links below for it. Now, kind of the last subject, and I want to dive into this because I'm certain that there are so many other parents that are feeling this, um, at least the ones that I've been talking to and, and myself feeling it, is that how are things going now for you during this coronavirus period? I mean, and especially for a lot of our kiddos who like consistency, things to be routine, life isn't you know, quite as routine in the things that we're doing. What are some strategies, tools, you know, that you've been implementing at home? Um, and how are things just overall going for you and your family? Yeah. Oh gosh, we're all struggling. I mean, we're all transitioning from mom and dad to para teacher, therapist, driver. And so um, uh, first thing I'm going to say is kudos to every single parent or grandparent caregiver out there doing it. And if you try and it doesn't work, that doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong. You just have to keep going. Right. Um, for us, I, Ethan misses his friends. Um, this is his last year in his adult bridge program, which is an extension of high school. So he uh, was going to graduate in May and now it'll just be male. Um, but we're still having to do his program. I'm very blessed to be able to work from home. My bosses are like, as long as emails are read and nothing's falling behind, you know, do what you've got to do. So I'm super blessed there, but we are doing the entire program at home. Yesterday was so busy. I mean, I did not stop until like 9 p.m., but it's just, it's just what you've got to do. My struggle was, where's the positive reinforcement? Where's the things that were already set up at school? where are they here? And I needed to get some kind of a reward system in place right away. That way um, he knew he was working for something. With Ethan, he needs choices. Um, so what we decided to do, we just started it this week, was um, we created a, a kind of like a home movie program. I actually put a video on my page. Um, Ethan loves cinema. He loves movies. And that's a reward that's gone now because we can't go to the movies. But um, I've, I discovered that Amazon has Amazon Cinema, which has all the movies that were in the theaters available to rent at home. So I made a concession stand at home and he had the choices of what went into it. And we priced everything. And then we've made a point system for behaviors that we're tracking. And if at the end of the week, he has a certain amount of points, he can go to the movies here at home. And when he completes his homework or chores, we're giving him fake money so that he can shop in the concession stand. I think it was important to set that up so that he has positive reinforcements and we have some kind of a reward system. And that has made schoolwork this week a lot easier because he's more excited to do it because he knows there's a reward at the end of the day. Yes. That is so awesome. So on your page, do you have pictures of like what the concession stand looks like? And, and that? Yeah, I need a little video. And then I plan to, this is week one. I plan to go live on Saturday and talk about what worked, what didn't work, what needs tweaked, um, things like that. But that's what I set up. Again, the choice came from Ethan. Choices are so important because if I would have chose you're going to earn a bike ride on Friday. He would be like, I don't want to go for a bike ride. It had to be something that he loves, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's what we chose to set up. And it was really very simple, but I did make a video that has the steps and it's on my adventures with Biggie page. Okay. And we are going to drop that below. So 
Um, that's great. Finding the incentive, putting something together, but how cute, like money reward. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like you can buy his popcorn, he could buy his candy. I mean, all yeah. of those kind of things. So and it's going gonna, it's gonna to fulfill his life skills math um, requirement also because it's, it's light money management. So I also thought about, I can add this piece of homeschooling in without him knowing it's actually his math but I can, I, I hit it into the reward program. I just love it. I love it. So we're going to drop that site below as well as the book links and all of that. But if someone's watching this today and maybe they don't want to comment under the Facebook live, they want to reach out to you and maybe they have um, a young adult in the similar age bracket as you. And just for some ideas, what is the best way to reach you with kind of a message? Oh, anybody can send me um, a message via comment or a messenger on Facebook. Um, my email address is also listed on my Facebook page, which is just adventureswithbiggy at gmail.com. I love hearing from people and I love interacting. Um, so anybody, there's the only dumb question is the question you don't ask, right? right. So I love talking to people. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, we will put that um, and drop it all below and put it into the text. But I thank you so much for spending your morning with us, Jackie. I really, um, I really, really, really appreciate it. Um, I can't wait to go when we're done with this. I'm going to go check out your little movie. <laughs> Your little movie stand video. I'm going to go and do that as soon as we're done. Um, and before we, before we log off, is there anything else that, uh, words of encouragement, things, anything you would like to leave um, your community of other parents with? I just, I, I just, the one thing that I always say is to know that trial and error is, is the way to finding out the right thing for you and mm -hmm. never get discouraged when something doesn't work because it doesn't mean it was wrong. It just means it didn't work. And to keep going and bouncing ideas off of um, one another, you have this wonderful tool available to you nowadays called social media. Get on there, find what works for you and just keep going. I love it. I love it. And with what we're going through right now, we all need to know, keep going and we're all in this together. So we're all in this together. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, thank you so very much. And remember everybody stay home, stay safe. We will be yes. back on later on today. Thanks for tuning in this morning. So check out our times for that. If you guys want to know any more about the On Air Advocate, you can head on over to onairadvocate.com and all of our resources are right there. If you want to join our private community, head up to the top of this Facebook page, hit the blue button, and that will let you in. So on that note, everybody have a fabulous morning. Happy Thursday. Bye, guys. Bye.